Hi, this lesson will be on um, the negative indices, so the index law involving um, negative powers. So we'll just start um, from the basics and just understand how this law works, and then we'll get to do some more complicated problems. So the negative index law um, states that if you have, for example, a to the power of a negative number that we can call n, um, it's equal to sorry, it changed colour, it's equal to um, 1 over a to the positive n. And we can see there's been a change in that the negative n has now become positive. And the reason why we need to have our powers to be negative is if I try to calculate 2 to the power of negative 3, um, it's impossible for me to do this with a negative power because what can we do? I know that 2 to the power of 3 is a positive 8, but what is 2 to the power of negative 3? That's where it doesn't make much sense. But according to this law, this will equal 1 over 2 to the power of 3, which then equals 1 over 8. And we can see that with negative powers, our numbers are getting smaller and smaller the larger our power is, because 1 eighth is way smaller than a whole number 8. So just keep that in mind. Now to understand and revise how this law works, if we have um, a problem, if we have um, a problem like this, x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of 3, now using the second index law, when we divide and we have the same bases, we know we have to subtract our powers. So our base x will stay the same, so there's my x, but now I go 2, take away 3, which is a negative 1. And you can see I've ended up with a negative power because we go from left to right, 2 take away 3 is negative 1. Now, I can rewrite this problem like this, x over 2 divided by x to the power of 3. These two questions are the exact same thing, just written in a different form. Now if I calculate this question this way and I simply take away um, my smallest amount, in this case I've got two x's on top and three on the bottom, well I can take away two from the top and I'm left with nothing or a 1, um, but of course three take away two, I'm left with 1x or x to the power of 1. And if I write this out, we can see that we have this. Now I'll make my 1 visible to emphasize that this 1 is actually a positive 1. So if both our questions were the same, that means both our answers are also equal. So that means if I have x to the power of a negative 1, it's the same way as me writing 1 over a positive power 1 x to the power of positive 1, same thing. Um, so to get from this to this is the next thing we're going to look at. So I'll just clear the page. So x, so x to the power of negative 1, there are a few things that I'll make visible, and that is there is an invisible one in front of that x, and also the x to the power of negative 1 is sitting on an invisible one. Now I've made these visible because now it will help us to understand what happens next. For this to become positive, I can see, like we had before, that is equal to this. So to, to make this look the same, I have to simply get this x to the power of negative 1 and put it on the bottom. And by doing that, by switching, I will make it a positive x to the power of positive 1. And that's it. That's how the index law works. So the trick is, if you see any negative powers on top, you put them on the bottom. Any negative powers on the bottom, just put them on top. And they automatically become positive. So let's try a few examples. Question 1, um, we see we have a negative power here. Now be careful, that 2 does not have a negative power. It has a positive power, which is 1. So the 2 will be staying on top. Okay, right now they're both on top of 1. Now this x to the power of negative 3 simply goes on the bottom and it becomes positive. So we're left with 2 over x to the power of 3 or x cubed and I'm done. So this one here, it looks similar but if you have a look, that power over here um, is a negative 1. Which means now both of these have to go on the bottom. And if everything has to go on the bottom, we're left with Remember, there's an invisible 1 up here that we can't see, saying 1 times that 2. Um, it stays on top. So this will equal 1 over oops, 2 to the power of 1, which is invisible. I can write it now. And x to the power of 3. Now with this problem, um, 
Now with this problem, um, all you have to do is, okay, let's see what's negative in powers and what's positive. And I can clearly see I've got a to the power of negative 2 and a to the power of negative 5. So these two have to move. That has to go, oops, sorry, it just froze. Where's my mouse? All right, I'm sorry. All right, I'm sorry about that. I'll just rub off my... Okay. So the a to the power of negative 2 has to go down here. The a to the power of negative 5 has to go on top. And that's it. So a way to do this is if anything isn't moving, it can stay in the same spot. Um, and just remember, with our b and our b, because they're both positive, they won't be moving. And one's on top, one's on the bottom, I can just cancel that. So I'll be left with, if the a squared goes on the bottom, it's now a positive a squared, and the a to the power of negative 5 goes on top, it becomes positive. So that would have been our final answer. Um, but since we have the same base, we can now simplify this. So, um, and now we can simply say, take away 2 from the bottom, it's gone. 5 take away 2 is a to the power of 3. So there's our final answer. So for this one, we were also able to cancel out. Um, but please make sure before you cancel out, you make your powers. If they're negative, you make them positive. Okay, here are two more, um, more basic questions. Now with number four, whenever you see numbers, we can obviously evaluate our numbers and get a final answer. Um, and now I notice I've got two to the power of negative two and three to the power of negative two. So I have to now put them on the bottom. So you should end up with a fraction that is, if that goes on the bottom, one is on top. Don't forget that. And we have 2 to the power of positive 2 now. Plus, and once again, 3 to the power of negative 2 goes on the bottom. And we have 3 squared. And now we can work this out. Um, all we have to do is evaluate 2 squared, which leaves me with 1 over 4. Plus, and 1 over 3 squared. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay? Um, and now... To add these fractions, you can just put it in your calculator, but you know when we add fractions, we have to have the same denominator. So you can just work this one out, the rest of it out. With 5, um, we notice straight away we have negative powers, so we have to move these powers. Um, if they're on the bottom, put them on top, they become positive. If they're on the top, put them on the bottom, and they become positive, and we're done. So a way to do this, um, I notice that all my variables are different. And some will be staying in the same place. So B, because it's positive, it stays in the same place. D, because it's positive, it stays in the same place. And F, because it's positive, it stays in the same place. Okay? That's how I usually do this so I don't get confused with what I've moved and, um, and it, it can get confusing. And now work with one thing at a time. A to the power of negative 2 goes on the bottom. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, I can put it in the front. So I have now A to the power of positive 2, so it's a squared. C goes on the bottom as well. I'll squeeze it in here. So C to the power of positive 5. And don't forget our E has to go on top, so we end up with E to the power of positive 6. And that's our answer. Just check and see, can we simplify anything? No, we can't. We haven't got a B on the bottom or an E on the bottom, so that's it. Um, so a, a way to do this is write down first what won't be moving, because if they're positive, they don't move. Now, I forgot to mention that your final answer must always have positive powers. Never leave an answer um, with a negative power, especially if you know now how to um, change the powers to positive. So with this one, you notice that we are using one of the index laws where if you've got a power outside the bracket, you multiply it with every power in the bracket. Whoop. So negative 2 times a positive 3, negative 2 times negative 2, and negative 2 times a positive 1, which leaves me with... 4 to the power of negative 2. I have a negative 2 times a negative 2, that's positive 4. And B, I've got 3 times negative 2, that is a negative 6. Now, you notice that that's become a positive, so the A to the power of 4 will stay on top. Don't forget everything is on an invisible 1. So we have an A to the power of 4 on top, so we don't have to write a 1. And on the bottom will go my... 4 to the power of negative 2, and my b to the power of negative 6, and they will become positive. So I will have a to the power of 4 that stays on top, and on the bottom I have 4 squared now, it's positive, and b to the power of 
6. And because we have 4 squared, we can evaluate this. So a to the power of 4, and I know that 4 times 4 is 16, and then b to the power of 6. We can't simplify any, any of our variables because a and b are different, and so that's our final answer. Now with, now with this problem, um, it's starting to look a bit more complicated, but they're just as easy if you follow, um, do this step by step. So your first step is, of course, get rid of your brackets. Then your second step is then to remove any negative powers. Do those two steps first. Brackets, just like Bodmas, and then powers, make them positive if they're negative. So to do this, I can see that um, I change my color. Up here, I'll have a negative 2 times a positive 3 times a negative 2. That belong, that's a j to the power of negative 2. And the 6 has a positive 1 there. So 1 times negative 2. And of course, now that 2 is outside the brackets, so it's not being multiplied with this 3. So a positive 3 times a negative 1, positive 3 times that 3. And of course, that a has a 1, and it gets times by 3. So we'll get rid of our brackets. So 1 times negative 2 on top. Oops. Sorry, I have 6 to the power of negative 2. j to the power of negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So a negative and a negative makes a positive there. So just double check that. On the bottom, my 2 is still there. Please don't forget we have 2 times out in between that bracket. So just write your times just in case we might one day have a number in the brackets. All right, so 1 times 3 is positive, 3, 3 times 3 from my j is 9, and minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. And now um, we can see that time doesn't have to be there because I haven't got 2 times another number, so that's okay. Now, the next step is get any negative powers and make them positive. I'm going to circle the negative powers I see, and here they are. I've got one, two, three. They have to simply switch places. On top, they go on the bottom. On the bottom, they go on top. Now, I'm going to first write what will be staying in the same place so I don't confuse myself. So I've got 2 and a to the power of 3 and j to the power of 9. They won't be moving. Neither will my j to the power of 4. It stays there. And now, starting with the 6, to the power of negative 2, it goes on the bottom. I'm just going to write it down here, but I'm going to put a times to remind myself I'm actually multiplying. And in between everything, there is times. Don't forget that. And, oops, sorry, and I'll make it a bit longer. Um, and k to the power of negative 6 goes on the bottom, and it becomes a positive 6. And, of course, k to the power of negative 3 goes on top, and it becomes positive. Okay? Um, and now you can see that first, don't go 2 times 6. Okay, we first evaluate what's 6 to the power of 2. 6 to the power of 2, I know, is 36. And then I will have 2 times 36. So I'll just rub off the front. I mean, top, um, so I have more room. Okay, so then I have 2 times 36, which is 72. Oh, just draw my line. So I've got 72 on the bottom. Try and write your numbers first because they usually are at the front. Um, and now just double check. I've got a to the power of three, nine to the nine. Uh, sorry, j to the power of nine, um, and a k to the power of six. So nothing else. I'm not multiplying anything with the same base on the bottom. Just keep that in mind. So everything else on the bottom will stay as it is for now. So j to the power of nine and k to the power of six. And on top, I've got j to the power of four and k to the power of 3. And now my final step is, is there anything that we can simplify? Have a look. I've got 4 j's on top and 9 j's on the bottom. Yes, I can simplify that. Take away 4, it's a 1. 9 take away 4 is j to the power of 5. I've got 3 k's on top, take away 3 from there, my smallest amount. And 6 take away 3 is k to the power of 3. And it's just frozen. Again, k to the power of 3. Okay, um, do I have any a's on top? No a's on top, and I'm actually left with only a 1 on top. So our final answer, I'll just make some room so it's not so squishy. Our final answer will be um, 1 over 
a to the power of 3, j to the power of 5, and k to the power of 3. Please make sure any leftovers, if they're on the bottom, they stay on the bottom, and if they're on top, they stay on the top. And that's our final answer. Okay, so with this question, it's starting to get more challenging, but once again, get rid of your brackets first. So multiply powers with powers inside the brackets. So negative 2 times that 1 there, that's invisible, times a negative 2, and times that negative uh, that 1 in front of the 6. That's invisible. And of course here, 2 times 10. And see how these brackets go all the way around the top and bottom variables? That means they both get its turn to be multiplied with that 2. Over here, the brackets were only on top, was only on top, so that c to the power of negative 3 does not get multiplied with that um, negative 2. And it sort of looks quite obvious. So I'm left with 6 to the power of negative 2, um, minus 2 times minus 2 is positive 4, and 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. c to the power of negative 3 stays there, times 10 times 2 is b to the power of 20, over 3 times 2 is a to the power of 6. Now, don't start simplifying. Just do one thing at a time. And we know our next step is to any negative powers have to be made positive. So I can see I've got three negative powers. So these two will be going on the bottom and this will be going on top. So we'll first write down what will be staying in the same place, what won't be moving, and the a to the power of 4 won't be moving. Um, and these two are both positive, so they can stay where they are. A to the power of 6. So now I've got 6 squared on the bottom. It's now positive. I've got B squared on the bottom. It's now positive. And on top is now my C cubed, which became positive. And now that everything is positive, I will simplify what I can and evaluate my numbers. 6 to the power of 2 is 6 times 6, which is 36. So I'll get that ready and I'll just change my color. Oops, sorry. And now, um, so I've got 36 down there. All right, I've got two Bs on the bottom. Do I have any Bs on top? None here, but I have 20 here. So I can take away my smallest amount and 20 take away 2 is B to the power of 18. Um, and that's leftover is on top. Keep checking. I've got four A's up here and six A's down there. So take away um, four, my smallest amount. Six take away four is A squared, or A to the power of two. Now I'm left with my three C's on top, or C cubed. I don't have any C's on the bottom um, to simplify with, so it stays there. And now to write our final answer, um, we have I'll just write it up here, I guess, so it doesn't look so spread out. So c cubed over 36 times b to the power of 18 over a squared. And now that I've done simplifying, I'll just squeeze the final answer here. We have to multiply um, across. And just make sure sometimes you may have, if I had a b here, I'd have to add the power of that b with the power of this b. But we don't, so we end up with c to the power of 3 and then times b to the power of 18, that times has become invisible, and 36 times a squared, and we're done. So um, that was our last question. So all you have to do is keep practicing, and they can't get harder than this. The only way they can get harder is just chucking in more variables and making it look bigger and more complicated, but it's actually quite easy.